So proteins are chains of amino acids. And so what this means is that, that they are made up of building blocks uh, called amino acids. These amino acids are chemically bonded uh, one after another uh, to make the, uh, the amino acid chain. And amino acids, there's 20 that are used to make proteins in humans. And they are have a similar structure, as we can see here in the diagram. They all have a carbon atom in the middle, a carboxyl group, an amino group, and a hydrogen atom attached. And then what made, makes each amino acid unique is this R group. So the R group you can think of as the variable group. Some of those R groups have a positive charge, others have a negative charge. Some of them are sort of big and bulky, others are very small and compact. Some of them love water, they are hydrophilic, others hate water, they are hydrophobic. And so the way a protein folds depends on how all of these different amino acids interact with each other up and down the length of an amino acid chain. So we can imagine if this is my amino acid chain that was just produced by cellular ribosomes, if I have a positive amino acid on this end of the chain, a negative amino acid here, positive and negatives always attract, so that chain is going to fold over and form a loop-like structure. Uh, we can further imagine if we had some hydrophobic amino acids in this part of the amino acid chain, these are going to naturally orientate themselves towards the inside of the protein molecule. Uh, so they'll be away from the water that makes up most of the interior portion of the cell. Uh, likewise, hydrophilic amino acids will tend to orientate themselves to be on the external or the outside portion of the protein. And we mentioned that different amino acids have different uh, molecular sizes. So if we had some amino acids in this portion of the amino acid chain that were big and bulky, we would have a loop like this that sort of looped out to make space for those large amino acids. On the other hand, if we had a run of amino acids that were very small, that just simply don't take up much space, the most stable conformation for this protein to take would be a flatter loop. And um, so all of these different things will impact how a protein folds. Uh, and so the protein structure is determined by amino acid sequence and those amino acids interacting with each other up and down the length of a long amino acid chain. Um, and it might be hundreds or even thousands of amino acids long. And so the shape, the ultimate shape of the protein as that amino acid chain folds up to give us our complex three-dimensional structure, the ultimate shape is what determines the function of that protein. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that on the next slide. But first, I just want to address, um, we have 20 amino acids, 10 non-essential, 10 essential. Many of you have probably heard this terminology before. Uh, you may not know exactly what it means, though. Um, so it simply means whether or not we need to get those amino acids from our diet. So a non-essential amino acids is an amino acid that the cells in our body can synthesize. Uh, so if we don't consume it, we're not going to be deficient. Uh, however, the essential amino acids, our cells simply don't have the biochemical pathways to produce those amino acids. So if we do not consume them from our diet, uh, we will be deficient. So it is essential that we get them from our diet. And so finally, I just want to give an example, a physiological example, of how protein structure really dictates protein function. And that is in the hemoglobin protein. So hemoglobin is the protein contained within our red blood cells that transports oxygen throughout the body. So that may sound straightforward, transport oxygen, carry it from one place to another. But if we think about that, what that protein is doing is pretty incredible. It is doing the opposite function depending on where it is in the body. So when hemoglobin is in our lung cells, um, it, it's in, um, in red blood cells. As those red blood cells circulate through the lung cells, the hemoglobin protein grabs onto or it picks up oxygen. As those red blood cells circulate out of the lungs into the tissues of our body, the hemoglobin does the exact opposite function. It releases those oxygen uh, molecules. So how does that same protein carry out literally the opposite function depending on where it is in the body? 
Well, this all has to do with how sensitive proteins are to their environment. So when the red blood cells are circulating through the lungs, the pH of the blood is very slightly higher. And it's, again, it's a fraction of a pH point. A very slight change in pH um, causes that hemoglobin protein to take on the conformation that makes it easy to grab onto oxygen. As the hemoglobin uh, it circulates out of the lungs into the tissues, the pH drops ever so slightly, becoming ever so slightly more acidic. This causes a very slight conformational change in the hemoglobin protein uh, that releases the oxygen. And that's illustrated in my slide as well. Uh, we can see the hemoglobin undergoing that conformational change and then either releasing or grabbing onto the blue oxygen molecule. Thanks for watching.